Hey there, hi. Today feels like a good day to learn something new. So let's go. Before we start our day, I would like to say thank you to our sponsor, iFixit, for sponsoring this video and making it possible. One of the most common questions I get is, Mercury, what do you have in your little tool pouch? And here's the thing, I have some very specific tools that I carry with me all the time and I use for almost everything. Now, keep in mind, I'm a maintenance technician, right? I like to repair things. I don't do a lot of renovations. I don't do a lot of full construction. I don't do a lot of electrical and plumbing. So this is the most straightforward universal pouch that I would recommend. Let's walk through each one of these. First things first, everyone should have their multi-screwdriver. This is a 12-in-1. It has a whole bunch of different options that I love so much. If I flip it around, what you'll have right here is you'll have your flathead and then you'll also have your Phillips. And then if I flip it around again, you'll have your smaller flathead and your smaller Phillips. If I do it one more time, then you'll have square bits, a smaller square bit and a bigger square bit. And then if you want to get even more fancy, you have a nut driver right here, a nut driver right here, and a nut driver right here. All different sizes that can make your life a lot easier when you're working on appliances or in a tight spot and you can't get to your ratchet set. The next step we have here is our wonderful handy dandy knife here. This is your utility knife. I like the ones that can lock in place. You can have this right here and it's not going to fold down or cause me any damage when I'm doing my job. And all I gotta do is press this in and then it's good to go. I do like Milwaukee as you can see, but I also like Klein and then I also like the Waltz utility knife as well. But really anything that works best for you. I don't marry myself to brands, okay? I like to work what's best for me in the moment that I need it and that's a wide variety. I have a whole bunch of different types of utility knives. They're not all Milwaukee's. But I always like the clips so it can clip right onto my pouch. The next one is one of the most important tools that any person, renter, homeowner, or anybody could ever have. This is a 10 inch adjustable groove joint players. Now this is a tiny one, but there's much bigger ones they also recommend too. You'll see that I have a collection of them right here. These are just so universal and well used for plumbing. When you're do, trying to take apart a sink trap or you're trying to take apart a sink stopper or toilet or anything when it comes to plumbing, these are very important. I like to have a smaller one always in my pouch. So if I need something, I can just adjust it and I'm good to go. And I love these so much. Definitely worth the investment. You will also see that I have my wonderful Allen key set right here. I keep that right in my pouch. This is my standard Allen key set, but I also would recommend having a metric too. Having a standard and a metric ensures that no matter what, you're not gonna get frustrated that you don't have the right set with you. And this is super handy for set screws, for a lot of machine screws. It's super handy to have one of these. Highly recommend them. Now last, and certainly not least, is your crescent wrench. Crescent wrenches are universal. They're great in so many ways. They're affordable. I highly recommend not getting a super cheap one and getting one that's a little bit more sturdy. As you can see, it's pretty worn out over the years. When it starts getting this worn out, it's kind of time to replace it. Otherwise, you might strip the sides of your bolts and your screws, and you definitely don't want that. You don't want tools to make your life harder. You want your tools to make your life a little bit easier, okay? But as you can see, I started with these four tools on purpose. These four tools, I think, are the most universal tools that you can use in a lot of different ways. If you have extra cash, that's when we start about adding the crescent wrench. That's when we start talking about adding your hammers. And then once you get all that, then we're getting your vice grips. And then we're getting your hacksaw. And then your torpedo levels. And then you can get all different kinds of tape measures. But start small. And don't invest in a toolkit if you can avoid it. If you absolutely need a toolkit and you need to have a variety, I recommend it. But also be aware of this. If you get a toolkit and it comes in a whole bunch of different tools, less is more. All because it has 65 tools, does that mean all 65 are made with quality, okay? That's why I say invest in a small little pouch like this and build as you go along. 
I hope that helps. Now, let's show you something else you may want to know. One of the other most common questions I get is about wo low water pressure in your shower heads. Now, here you will see, this is a pretty standard shower head that you can see in a lot of different places. This is a new one, so you're not going to get all the calcium buildup and all the lime buildup, but essentially, there's a few things that you can do. If you take off the shower head, you will see that there's kind of a gasket in there. A lot of them now will come in with some type of regulator, and that regulator can be removed and hopefully solves a problem. It also sometimes creates a whistling effect. So if you turn on your shower and you just hear for a really high pitch, <laughs> that might be what's causing the problem, and you can just take that right out. Now, that will mean, make sure that there is more water coming out, but it doesn't change how much water is coming out that much in order to be unfriendly to the environment, okay? But that all being said, what we're going to do is we're going to take floss heads and clean out all the holes inside the shower head. You can get these floss heads basically almost anywhere, but especially Amazon. Pull it up and you can see it's a little tiny brush. Look at that, isn't that fancy? <laughs> and instead of putting this between our teeth, we're going to take it and put it right into the holes like this. And we're going to clean out every single hole we have in here. Now, a lot of people are going to want to use vinegar. A lot of people are going to want to use various different chemicals, like CLLR. But remember, the coating around your shower head is delicate. And you can easily scuff it, damage it, or stain it. And if you don't want your shower head to look, you know, not great, then you want to make sure that you do things like this rather than dip it in vinegar. But it will work if you don't care about staining or destroying the exterior of your shower head. And just like that, it's nice and clean, and I hope that helps with you at home. A handy dandy little thing like this can go a long ways. Here's an extra little tidbit that you might like a lot. A lot of you love to paint, right? But you might not know about these things that might make your life a little bit easier. This is wonderful. This is a handy paint pail. I'm very fond of it. You can hold your hand nice and tight like this, and it, you can get liners with it. So when you're done and you dump a lot of the excess paint out, you can pull it and then let it go, and then you don't need to worry about all the cleaning you have to do. One of the other parts about this that make it so special is that when you have a brush, brushes will always have a metal component to it, right? And that metal component can be attachable right to the magnet right here. And just like that, it holds your brush, and it doesn't get down inside of your bucket like that. But another thing you may not know about painting that might make your life a little bit easier down the road is when you're painting, you want to make sure you don't have any stray little things, right? Having the stray little brush um, thingy bobs <laughs> can definitely add uh, bristle. The, the thing was bristle. I did it. I'm smart. <laughs> but that being said, when we have stray bristles, it can make it much harder for us. It can make bad lines. It's harder to cut in. So we want to keep it nice and straight. <laughs> and we want to slide it back in here and keep the cover to help us to be a protector. And that's why you don't throw away these covers. You keep them. Super handy. It's going to keep the shape a lot longer, and it will extend the life of your paintbrush. Look at that. The things you find out. I always think it's important to remember you don't know what you don't know. And you shouldn't beat yourself up when something is so simple, but yet you didn't know it. There's a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know that I don't know them because, well, how was I supposed to know them? <laughs> So remember that and give yourself some space as you try to learn new things all the time. I'm proud of you for sticking in there today and picking up little things you may have thought you knew, but you didn't. Have a good day. Take care. And remember, you're worth the time it takes to learn a new skill. Hey there, hi, today's a good day to learn something new and maybe pick up something, oh shit. Real close, I felt it, wanted to change it up a little bit, and it up. <laughs>